You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Headlines of the news today, the 26th of March. The Oxford Six groomers have been plying their trade since 2004. Labour councillors behaving badly yet again. British employers putting the British last, not first. Yet more illegal workers in an Indian and Chinese restaurants are found. Member states of EU to fund deportation returns. Spanish in firing line from Finance Committee of EU. Black killer standing trial in Sarasota over two British killings. Thought for the day, the Oxford Six and Islamic domination. UK News. The six men accused of being part of a sex ring, which is police speak for Muslim grooming, have been denied bail and will appear at Aylesbury Crown Court this Friday. The men named as Zishan Ahmed, 26, Kamar Jamil, 26, and Jam Dogar, 30, Akhtar Dogar, 31, Mohammed Karar, 37, Bassan Karar, 32. The prosecutor stated that these charges relate to the sexual exploitation of girls between 11 and 16 across the Oxford area over a period of several years. Another Labour Party female councillor has been drinking again. Last week saw a Labour Council candidate in Lancashire drunk and arrested at a football match, and this week Labour Councillor Victoria Quinn the girlfriend of Labour Council leader Sir Albert Bore, was ejected from a meeting for unsuitable language. She was heard saying to Lib Dem councillor Mr Malani, you are full of shit. As children were present in the audience, she was asked to leave. Apparently, she later apologised. And Labour councillor Les Barron is under investigation over an alleged honours scandal. He and councillor Sir Ron Watson are alleged to have conspired in assisting each other in the attempt to gain honours. The Sefton Standards Committee is dealing with the pair. Private groups have landed £620 million worth of asylum seeker jobs, putting British workers last yet again. Serco is especially a drain on the public sector. They have earned billions of pounds from the government contracts in the UK, Middle East and Australia. Serco is also responsible for a large number of job losses in the UK, since they keep moving critical parts of work to cheap labour destinations, such as India and the Philippines. They also run a huge sweatshop in India. Seven illegal workers have been found in an Indian restaurant in Aberdeenshire. Last week saw police and border agency officers raid the Lakshmi Indian restaurant in Peterhead. A Pakistani and six Bangladeshi men were arrested. Five of the illegal immigrants have been detained and will be immediately deported from Britain. Last week saw four more arrests in the Chinese restaurant in Plymouth, where illegal immigrants have also been detained for deportation. Meanwhile, the border agency has set its sights on hosting asylum seekers in the former halls of the residence of Leeds University in Yorkshire. Euronews. The EU is trying to keep its books financially balanced this week, placing tough fiscal measures on the Spanish people. Enraged at this, some say that protesters in Spain will spark off another campaign within that country. Reports say that Spain has to observe the failures in Greece. The EU has seen Spain as a huge problem on the ongoing debt crisis. World News. The trial of the killing of two British holidaymakers in Florida has got underway in Sarasota. James Cazares, 24, and James Cooper, 25, were found shirtless and with their trousers round their thighs after being shot several times in a rundown area of Sarasota last April. The two friends had stumbled drunkenly down a wrong street into the dangerous housing projects. They were then trying to find their way out when they were approached by two black youths, one with a red bandana over his face, demanding money. Sean Tyson, 17, denies two counts of first-degree murder and, if convicted, faces life in jail without parole. The prosecutor said Cazares and Cooper told Tyson that they don't have any money to give him. The two young men were then told to put their trousers down before being mercilessly gunned down by Tyson, aged then 16. Another witness said the teenager boasted about shooting the Britons after trying to rob them. It was stated that Tyson had told them, Well, since you ain't got no money, then I have something for your ass." and open fire. Post-mortem examination showed that Mr. Cooper was shot four times and Mr. Cazares was shot twice in the back. South Koreans have spoke out of a possible North Korean missile test over its territory. 
Officials and military in Seoul have reported that it will not stand for aggression from the communist north. South Koreans say that any North Korean missile tests over its airspace will be shot down. The unstable communist north is playing a cat-and-mouse game with the Western world, being a thorn in its side. Thought for the day. The Oxford Six and more. Well, I have to say it, I'm afraid. If these six excuses for men had been English or even European, I would have had to be taken away in a straitjacket to the funny farm by men in white coats. There we are, indisputable evidence that these following points are true. The sex grooming of British children has been going on for years. It is spreading southwards down from the north, in short, following the Muslim moving their enclaves south. It is a family affair. Note four of these names belong to two brothers of two different families. All the arrested men are of the Muslim faith and all older, which shows the so-called progress over the years from a teenage prime groomer to the rest of the family. No non-Muslims have been groomed. Well, even with these facts, the small paragraph in the Sunday Mail was all this disgusting crime got on page 22. The establishment and the Muslim Council of Britain are going to have to have their work cut out, pushing this one under the carpet. It is not some small town in the north, but a southern university town, indeed the home of Marxism and liberalism, and the multicultural ideal of a gathering of well-educated multi-ethnic peoples, in your dreams, matey. As in the case of Laura Wilson, the so-called British first honour killing not, this grooming is pushing its way towards the light of day from the murky and filthy hole it has always been in. Denied by the authorities, the police, the councils, and the social workers, and sometimes even by the parents of the girls involved, this crime does exist, and it does kill. It is a crime of religion, in so far as it is perpetrated by one religion on members of other religions. It is a race-hate crime, in so far as it is perpetrated by members of one race on members of other races. These facts cannot be denied. In the case of Mohammed Mira, Nick Griffin has encapsulated this position brilliantly. It is the aspect of jihad and the Muslim religion. These sexual groomers are not jihadists. Their moral bank is bankrupt. It does not have the whiff of revenge for deeds done or not done, but it has the whiff of greed and lust. These animals always target the very young and the gullible, as indeed in the good old days of slavery, both white and black, which was honed to a fine metal under the Islamic flag. Nothing has changed. People do not change. They do not go from a wonderful, peaceful, all-encompassing religion to killing and enslaving all who come under their auspices, whether in adopted countries or countries they were born in. I always pay attention to the comments you all send in, and one of them referenced directly what I am speaking about today. I will not mention email names, but it is highlighted the fact that the Western world kowtows to the Saudis because of oil. Everyone knows that Moses turned the wrong way towards milk and honey and ignored the oil. So it is with this in mind that the Saudis and most rich Muslims in general are turning their thoughts towards Europe and the time when either oil is finished or we have an alternative source of fuel. They are buying up huge swathes of land around England, especially in the Midlands and southern parts, for so-called schools or Islamic centres. In fact, they have been doing this for some years. We down south were fortunate in meeting last week in a wonderful conference centre set in the middle of our region. We were also dismayed to learn that the company de Vere has sold this hotel and marvellous 32-acre site to the, wait for it, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Oh yes, my friends, like most of the other purchases throughout our green and pleasant land, this acreage is near a main road, totally secluded and on a hill. Are we thinking fortification here? Well, I am. It is reportedly going to be used for a school. It will house, apparently, 140 young men, all over the age of 16, and 20 teachers. Unreportedly and unofficially, it will also probably house all sorts of weaponry, a huge madrasa, Muslim centres for all sections of the Muslim community, and weapons of mass destruction. Oh yes, and vast amounts of cash, because the Muslims never do business through our banks or clearing houses, as we are unbelievers. It is this community that also organises the massive Jalsa Salana festival, upon which last year 30,000 Muslims attended from all over the UK and the world in Hampshire, and many local people in Surrey feel that this school will also house that as well. Well, at least the Romans gave us central heating and roads. Even Hitler admired the British way of life and culture, 
But these people, whilst professing peace and love, do not care for us or our way of life. They want to obliterate it and substitute their own, the way of the Quran, the way of Sharia. Which brings us back to the problem of Muslim grooming gangs. Well, the problem is that they are moving south, and the more Muslims you have in a community, or rather outside a community, the more this problem will raise its very ugly and putrescent head. The main problem is ignorance. Ours and the government and local councils and businessmen, they do not know that Muslims do not appreciate good manners. They do not appreciate us bending over backwards, except in a sexual sense, maybe. And they do not appreciate tolerance. Because they practice none of these attributes, so to them it is weakness. They do not sell their land for churches or British shops and businesses, and never have. They colonize by money, not by fear, of which we should be, ladies and gentlemen, very, very frightened. There is a story of Brazil many hundreds of years ago before it was known. The Spanish were the first to go there, complete with soldiers and priests. They marched in to dominate the local Indians. The locals killed them all. The Portuguese then went over. However, they went with beads and trinkets. Guess what? They settled, and now Portuguese is the language spoken in Brazil, not Spanish. Now, the local Indians didn't fare much better, but it is proof that nowadays, especially if you conquer a country and people buy money, not by soldiers and democracy, Everyone wants what they think they are entitled to, not what somebody else thinks they are entitled to. You win by money, not words. And that is what the Muslims are doing, buying us as a land and as a people, overtly by purchasing key areas of land, and then subvertly taking whole generations of young women and children and blighting their lives forever. How do we stop it? Well, we stop all immigration now. We repatriate illegals. We stop halal killing and refuse to handle all meats from this method of slaughter. We refuse to sell land and businesses to people who have not been in the country for less than 30 years or born in this country without a British business partner. We make laws to prevent outside communities buying up land from private owners. This is just the start. They want to take England over by money, so it is justice to attack them with money. Hit them in the purse. Make life not so easy for them and the Muslim grooming would, I feel, leave this country along with hopefully massive amounts of Muslim people. I do not feel any animosity towards them in particular, but I feel that they and their backers are not only taking over England, but attacking our culture and our people as well. This is bad because in most cases our government is paying them for the privilege of doing so. Firstly, with huge payouts to many Muslim immigrants, Secondly, by so-called aid to Pakistan and the Indian subcontinent. Thirdly, by encouraging their religious communities to buy up whole areas of our land. And fourthly, by groveling to the Saudis, who are a miserable bunch of jumped-up goat herders. My thought for the day, get some backbone, British government. Put more money into the country and businesses, so we are not so vulnerable to these dangerous outside forces. In short, get a nationalist government in fast, or it will be too late. And finally, this is one group of youngsters you do not want to upset. The Huffington Post is reporting from Madrid that members of the Zemun clan, a Serbian mafia family, ate a traitorous member in a five-course meal. The clan, who were behind the killing of the Serbian prime minister in 2003, killed Milan Jurasic when he stole from the group and then ate him for dinner. They took the edible parts of him to cook and put the rest through a meat grinder. Stretko Kalanic nicknamed the Butcher, told on the group to the Croatian police. Also involved in the killing in 2009 was Luka Bojovic, who was captured in Valencia last month. Don't eat out in Valencia being the message, I feel. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozar, and I wish you all a very good night. Please stay listening, spread the word, and keep the comments coming in, the more the merrier.